Fine. Okay, so today we'll talk about the Fibonacci number, okay? Yeah. Fibonacci number. So the, the Fibonacci number is a sequence, number sequence. The first number is 1, the second number is uh, the first number is 0, second number is 1, and the next number is always equal to the previous two, right? Yeah. So that's 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and that's it. Okay? Got it? Yeah? yeah? So if we put it in a mathematic equation, we can say f, f function, let's say f n equals f n minus 1 plus f mi n minus 2. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah. yeah? Because this f n, if n is here, yeah? Then the n minus 1 is here. And mi n minus 2 is here. So if f n equals f n minus 1 plus n minus 2, yeah? yeah? And we need to also define the first two cases. f0 is 0, f1 is 1, okay? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. So how, how can we implement it using computer? Def f means the Fibonacci numbers? Yes, yes, or f, we just use f for sure, okay? For, for quicker. Then n, but you need Brackets. Okay. Then yeah. column. Yeah. Then need to word what are the. Okay. So letters. look, look. It's actually very, very easy because look, we have defined those cases. Yeah. yeah. So we just have to do this. If n equals zero. Yeah. Then what? What should we define? F equals zero. If n equals zero, what should we define? Should we return? N. Return zero. Yeah? The n is zero. Yeah. The a is zero. Okay, look look here. If n equals one, what should we return? One. Yeah. Uh, this return, when when we, when the computer executes the return, you will return this value immediately without going further, right? Mm. Yeah? Then else we return what? F n minus one plus F n minus two. Okay? This is f is the function we know, okay? Recursion, okay? We talked about recursion yesterday, yeah? Did you get it? Okay? So it's pretty sim similar to what have we, we have defined in math, right? Yeah? Okay? So we, let's, let's, let's do this. Look. Let's do it, okay? Let's, let's, for example, f5. We want to calculate f5. So what values do we need to calculate in order to get the value of f5? So we will do 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. No, no, uh, what I mean is here, from here. f5, what do we need to calculate in order to know before we calculate the f5? Mm -hmm. hmm? What do we need to know before we calculate f5? This is f4, right? Yeah. This is F3, yeah? Yeah. So what do we need to know before we calculate F4? Mm. Uh, F3 and F2, right? Mm. Yeah? What, what do we need to know before we calculate F3? Can you tell me? What's the previous two items of F3? F, F2 and F1, right? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So do you find a problem here? Do you find a problem here? Mm -hmm. F3 we calculate twice. Am I right? Yeah. F2 here twice. Now, if you're going to this way, there will be F2 and F1. Okay? So F2 is calculated multiple times as well. Yeah. So, so is there a way to avoid calculating again and again? Yeah? yeah. So we use uh, something called... Uh, we can save this value, right? We can save, save this value. Or we'll put it down on a notebook. Yeah? Yeah? So how can we do this? So we first, first, 
first, if this key, this value is not calculated, we calculate it, and then we once we have the value, we put it in somewhere in the notebook. Yeah. So later, when we find this value, we want this value instead of calculating it again, we get the value from the notebook. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So you're so going to say notebook. Yeah, notebook. Look. N stands for notebook. No, no, no. N is the value we want to calculate. So we, let's modify a little bit. F, def F N, okay. And let's use it as M B stands for notebook. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do here? So let let's first check out this. Okay. So the notebook. Okay. The notebook. Notebook is a dictionary object. In Python, you use this curly brace. Yeah, dictionary curly brace to store the key value pairs. Key is value it, pairs. Is it curly brace? Curly brace. Okay. We we can work on that later. Okay. So so you can initialize is a curly brace object. So now we have a notebook. Yeah. So let's see if this value. If this value n is already in the notebook, right? So then now what do we do? We return. We immediately return. Look, look it up in the notebook. Notebook with the value n, right? Okay? Yeah. Then we can ask, ask this is the, the, the base case. If n equals 0, return 0. If n equals 1, return 1. Okay, now this is the interesting part. Now we don't want to know the answer, yeah? Answer equals fn minus 1, notebook, plus fn minus 2, notebook, okay? Plus this notebook object around. And then, now we know this answer, yeah? yeah. Now we want to save it on the, on, in the notebook, yeah? Put it down in the notebook. So let's say notebook n, yeah, because we are calculating the n equals answer. Now then let's return the answer. Okay? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Yeah. Look at the, the difference here. This is the one difference. Look it up. Right. Another difference here. To save it, to put it down in the notebook, yeah? And this is the notebook object. So you can say notebook, notebook equals these objects. And then you can say notebook like 3 equals what? 1, 1, 1, 2. So that's 3 is 2, right? So we can say 3 in notebook, this will return true, right? Right? If it's 4 in notebook, now we don't know yet, then you will return 4. Do you get it? Do you get it? Yeah? So after using this notebook, each value of the Fibonacci number, we only calculate once, right? Because the first time, we don't see it in the notebook, we calculate it. But after we get a value, we immediately put it down in the notebook. And next time, we, we look it up. So you're already in the notebook, so we don't calculate it again. We just look it up, right? Okay, got it? Yeah? And so we talk about two implementations, yeah? The first one without the notebook, the second one with the notebook. And we can also have one method which is probably simpler to implement. It's called iterative. So look, define Fn, yeah? Ryan? For, okay, so first two items. A equals zero. Let, let's define the current two items in a Fibonacci number, the first one is A, the second one is B, right? Right, this is zero, 01, okay? Yeah. Then we can, we want the N iteration for I in range N. So what do we do? A, B equals B, A plus B. And then we can return, return A, okay? So I know not for that, if they Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what happened here? Look. Zero, 1. Zero, 1. Okay, this is A, this is B. Okay, let's list it in the, in the table, okay? Okay, zero, 1. So, given an iteration. The first one, A, will become the value of B. 
B will become the value of A plus B, okay? A becomes the value of B is 1, right? B becomes the value of A plus 1 is 1, right? A becomes the value of B is 1. B becomes the value of A plus B is 2. A becomes the value of B, which is what? No, no, no. A becomes the value of B, which is 2. B becomes the value of A plus B, which is 3. So you see, this is the Fibonacci number here. Yeah? Yeah. And the next item is A becomes the value of B, 3. B becomes the value of A plus B, 5. You see? Why is it 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and, and 0, 1, 1, 2, 3? Yeah. Why? So we'll return this A is the Fibonacci number. B, B is the next eight. item. Yeah. yeah. B is 8. The next one, this is 5, this is A. Okay? Got it? Yeah. Okay? So how do you get it? Mm. So which, all of those three methods, which one do you like best? Well. Which one do you like best? Well. This is the one implementation. I remember the, the, the notebook one? Yeah. yeah? Remember the one without the notebook? Yeah. Recursion, which one you like the best? Notebook. Notebook one. And how good, how about you input that in the computer with the notebook one? Notebook one, okay? Good.